I mean the bull. Do you even lift, bro? Look at that neck. I mean the bull. Yeah, yeah. Looking handsome today, Ren. Did you miss leg day again? I see you're working on the old chest. You're a handsome man. Remy. You, you, you. Come on, let's go to Urban. Come on. Hi guys, I'm Paul from Urban Constrictors. So more recently, people have asked me what it's like to be now a full-time snake breeder. Now I know I have my shop and other things going on with rectorship and stuff, but my kind of nine to five is snake breeding. So I'm gonna take you through uh, a Friday morning, uh, Friday sort of late morning is all cleaning rodents. I'm not gonna show you that because it's incredibly boring. And the rodents are taking up more time than the snakes. Uh, I, I kind of have my days where I think, is it really worth it? Because I don't think the price of rodents in the UK is that high. But this is a typical Friday morning. So because it was raining last night, I went ahead and paired some more snakes. And every time on my videos, when you see these in the background when they're facing up, it means that pair of snakes have successfully locked. Then I, when the cards are facing upwards, I know I can just open it up, take the male out, take the card with him, fill his card out, come back, fill the female's cards out and the female cards are over there, I'm about to show you them. And I just know it's ready to go. So all these pairings, you can see every single one of them has uh, paired. This is a, just a blank card because I hadn't done that pair uh, of cards yet. So that just lets me know that before I take that male out, that card's gonna be done. Um, and then these two haven't, so I'm gonna check them now. So no, they haven't, they haven't locked. So uh, that's a chocolate clown, possible het hypo, and it's breeding a pied uh, female. So I'm going for chocolate double het clown pies, possible het hypos. I'm gonna put into a hypo combo too to try and prove them out. I actually do think I've got a strong chance to prove them out because these colors are so nice and rich. Uh, and then the other one is a yellow belly pie, female bred to a gravel het pie. So unfortunately they haven't locked. So one thing I wanted to do today is if you saw on my last video, when I was separating the clutch I've just cut, the very first or second egg, it was definitely the first or second, it was the second egg, but the first egg I cut, there was a bit of resistance. Now I'm gonna show you the difference in that one egg with the resistance to all the other clutch. So I talked about when they separate easily, you are kind of good to go. But that one egg, uh, I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to drop a video over the top of this video. First and foremost is the eggs are coming away without any issues. But also I can feel, uh, that one's got a little, little tiny bit of resistance, but not a lot. I can go ahead and take a look. So obviously I'm really, really hopeful to hit some amazing clown combos Ooh, the drum roll the drum roll in my head but it's been a while since i got egg goo snake egg goo all over me well that's a clown combo weirdly it looks super pastel but it can't be so that looks like maybe a pastel Maybe a pastel, lesser yellow belly clown, maybe. Yep. I'm going to show you that the resistance, uh, the, the snake with the resistance is still in the egg. So I've left the eggs in here just for reference. So there's all the empty eggs. You can see that they're completely got a bit of goo left in them, but there's the yolks, etc., is all absorbed up and there's no veins, no blood, etc. And then this one particular snake, which I do believe is the very, very best. It's getting very, very close to being ready. You can see the uh, the veins are now gone off the egg walls and the snake's looking absolute, absolutely amazing. I'm so excited about that. Uh, that's definitely going to be a keeper. So a little tip for you, when you're handling your snake boxes, make sure you've got a very, very good grip. And then we're going to take a little look at the ones that are out and then I'm going to do a more detailed uh, I'm going to do a more detailed video uh, just highlighting just how amazing this clutch is. So we'll start off with the hex. So I did hit 
the pastel hat. Uh, now, just so you know, guys, I always put a water bowl in, but I took it out because they had actually uh, knocked it over. I only put a, an inch or so of water in. I patted it out a little bit. You can see there's a lot of humidity in this tub. It's, tub. it's a little bit wet, but I thought I'd film this before I go ahead and clean them out. So I want to show you what it looks like on a real basis and not all <clears throat> print, uh, prepped. So a pastel heck clown, unfortunately the worst possible thing I could hatch, but it is what it is. Then this truly spectacular uh, pastel lesser, I think GHI, it's got to be on it, look at that. Um, probably yellow belly, I'm not sure on fire. The head kind of says fire because of how incredibly blushed out it is. It is just spectacular. But I don't know, but once it sheds, it'll tell me more. But for a hair, hair clown, that is one hell of a powerful, incredibly pretty snake. I absolutely love it. Look at them sidewalls. Just amazing. So then we move on to uh, what, I, what I'm hoping uh, is a pastel yellow belly GHI fire 100% egg clown so i haven't sexed them i'm not going to sex them on video because this video might go on a bit too long i want to be extra careful with them but just look at the pattern as it comes down and bleeds down the sides it's just amazing i am so uh so pleased with this clutch and i'm kind of thankful for finally hatching something that's really worth showing off so this one's got me a little bit stumped. I do think it's a pastel GHI because uh, my pastels don't typically uh, look like this. They're more reduced, uh, quite brighter. This is a little bit more muted colour and I think that's the GHI. The GH, all these little flecks and, and specks is kind of what's saying GHI to me in these side, side walls of the kind of, uh, kind of non, uh, what's the word? The, the kind of pattern's not uh, very symmetrical. It's very, uh, kind of random and busy so I think it is a GHI pastel clown but I will obviously know more once it sheds and then we move on to which one next this one which is just outstanding it really is amazing so this one will probably be staying here it's a pastel obviously GHI without question a yellow belly probable fire clown it's just amazing. I actually wanted to obviously miss pastel with this uh, male, but with this particular uh, pairing, I couldn't with the mum being a super pastel fire clown, but I'm really, really pleased I did because these colors are just amazing from the real rich yellowy oranges to that sort of peach uh, ball, uh, banding and then that beautiful black pattern. And you've got that really uh, non-symmetrical, very random pattern from the GHI. And then we move on to this one. Little bit confused what this one is. It's obviously pastel, it's obviously lesser. I'm kind of thinking GHI again because we're looking at the same sort of uh, radical sort of pattern, uh, very unsymmetrical and very random. But I, I, I'm not 100% sure, so I'm going to let this one shed out um, if it is what I think it is. Because I think this one is a pastel, lesser, GHI, yellow belly clown, and I think the one in the egg. Is the exact same but with fire laid on top of that so just couldn't have asked for more uh, i know obviously i could have because that could have been a combo but you've you've kind of got to take uh n the not so best to to obviously hatch the best ones so what a beautiful array of color and snakes so once i shed i'll, I'll do an update and so what my morning's going to look like before i go into the snake uh, in, into the rodent room is I'm just now going through all my pairings from all the way back from 2017. So this is what my cards used to look like and I keep all the data. So it was an ivory in the 2016 to 17 uh, season and she was bred to a bumblebee gravel. And then I used to stamp it like this and just tick yes or uh, just write yes or no. And then because this is a female, this is a female card, I used to write the date of ovulation, due, eggs and not slugs, blah, blah, blah. But I found that I'd miss ovulation sometimes because I was at work. So sometimes this data didn't get filled in. And quite often, I, I just kind of forgot. But this male actually proved out not to be gravel. So that's why I, I haven't, still haven't hit my uh, amazing gravel combos. Uh, but hopefully I'll hit some gravel pies and highway pies this season. So this is what a, a 2020 uh, breeding card looks like. 
This is a pastel clown, it's a female, uh, num she, the number two one, a 2020 season, and then her date, uh, who visited her. So if more than one male, so you see this one, it's got the same male, so I just do the double dots underneath. But then if, if you're kind of doing who's your daddy clutches, you can fill out uh, different males, but I, I don't think I'll be doing that. In lock, I do it with a tick now. Uh, uh, I'll just grab, so here's a 2021. So, so when they're in the sleeve, I always make sure the side bit where I do the filling in is the closest to the kind of entrance and exit. So I don't have to pull it all the way out and mess about trying to get it back in. So Mojave, Mojave Het Pied, 2020 season, GHI Het Pied, uh, first of the 10th, locked, yes. So that's as it goes. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. It's a little bit different to what I normally do. Um, it's nice to have Emma on the camera been able to follow me around. I'll try and do more videos like this if it's received well. So if you like the video, give a thumbs up, drop a comment in the comments box, uh, and I'll talk to you very soon. Cheers, guys. Hey, guys, so a little bit of bonus feature. So as a lot of you have asked, I will do uh, a more detailed approach video on the Green Tree Bikers, but I'm just gonna show you what these enclosures look like. Now I've got a camera woman. So people always say, uh, well, they don't always say, but people say, best team on paper and I have found because they don't sit on the paper um, that it's a very good way of doing it so when a defecate uh, water ball gets thrown out once I start getting this little bit of uh, a line it just gets changed out because these are only 10 pence each and they are uh, biodegradable so you can see uh, the bedding's pretty much fine I'm going to get this one out just to show you how amazing they are so the number one question everybody always asks me is do green tree pythons bite? Anything with a mouth can bite, so the answer is yes, I guess they do, but do I ever get bit? No, I don't. I've been struck up many times, you can see this one's gonna go to the toilet. Now I am conditioning these snakes because uh, the last owner uh, was feeding them a little bit lightly, so they need a little bit more weight put on them. But you can see that it's just a, yeah, in great shape now. Amazing colors, amazing head. Now one thing, one reason why these snakes have a really bad reputation is simply because a long time ago they was all wild caught and just like wild caught lions and tigers they still had the wild in them but as uh, breeding went on with lions and tigers they was obviously socialized and now you see people having them as pets just like these amazing snakes so it is actually a little bit overweight on the back end it's gonna have a real big poo probably in the next couple of days so this snake will not get fed uh, until it goes to the toilet but uh, back to the socialising. So because this is a captive bred animal, it's not uh, used to the wild and it's not kind of used to fending for itself and kind of uh, staying out of trouble. It has a more of a relaxed atmosphere. So it has a more of a relaxed um, attitude or lack of attitude. It's uh, an amazing snake. So this is the only enclosure I can't take the wood out because it's this sort of decorative piece of wood. So I can't take that out, but the other ones I can and I'll show you them. So you, you may notice there's no heating in this and it's simply because the room uh, sits, here's my voice, uh, 82 through the day and 79 through the night. So we're kind of daytime, it's now kind of creeping up. So it kind of goes between 82 and 83. So as you can see by this enclosure, it needs a proper clean out. So it's defecated, gone to the toilet. This one does strike from time to time, but <clears throat> it's all good. So this is an amazing uh, green tree. I've uh, got some amazing colours from one coil to the next, it almost looks like a different snake. So, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> got a frog in my throat now. Um, so best way to get them off is kind of put your fingers in between the coils, push them outwards and let them start to come off. Don't yank them off, just look, give, them, give them an opportunity to come off. It is a little bit more difficult when you've got the snake and the branch in your hand. But what you don't want to do is go and pull at that tail because of the tail the black part of the tail is a lure uh, for prey. So if you pull at the tail, it might give a, a feeding response, thinking that a rodent or summer or a bird is pecking at its tail. So I'll put the branch back. <clears throat> so these will get a good clean out today. Amazing colors on this one, They're a little bit thinner. This one was thinner than the other one and it's a little bit less of a good eater, but all this black pixeling, what they call mite phase when it's full scales. I don't really know what it's called when it's not full scale, just kind of just a pattern. But hoping this produces some interesting babies one day when it's ready. 
So I'll put that one back. So one thing I always make sure I do, I let the last thing they know to be positive and not negative, I don't put them back in a harsh way. So the next time I get them out, they won't be thinking, you know, uh, potentially negative things. I'll show you the last two. Now this This enclosure is worse still, and this enclosure is the one that's been stuck in a shed for what seems like a while. So I'm really trying to work this off, and it's gone through a sit. I'm not going to haul this one simply because it's going through the mill a little bit with this awful stuck shed. I'm trying my best to get it all off, but you see that amazing blue face. It's just a, a spectacular snake. That, just that blue sort of nose. It's just beautiful. So. I can smell it's gone for a wee as well, so it's going to have a really good clean out today. And then lastly, uh, same enclosure from Ikea. Lastly, I'm going to just show you the little tiny baby. Check that out. Oh, it's deep in shed. Just amazing. At this age, you can't hold them. You certainly shouldn't. I know a lot of breeders say you can, but you really shouldn't. Just absolutely stunning. These are my... Probably my favourite snake. I'd love to own the Boland's Python, but I've never uh, bought one yet. I do think I will, because that's right on the tip of the branch. I'm gonna just be extra careful. So, and then give them a good spray down. I spray them once a day, feed them once about every 10 to 14 days. And that's it. So a little bit of bonus feature. I'm now sweating bullets. We'll get, yeah, see, already we're at 82.2, uh, same thermometer. So that's kind of going to settle at that. So if you like the video, guys, give it a thumbs up. Different approach to my videos. Hope you enjoy them. Talk to you very soon.